Hello, everyone. Welcome back for day two. We are designing a movie app. Super exciting. I'm your host, Elise. Welcome, everyone, in the chat. We have Lee. We've got Voodoo Bell. I remember all the great movie titles that you guys were giving yesterday. Um, that was really great. We have like a long listing or long list now of things and movies I need to catch up on. Um, before we intro our guest, I wanna talk to you about Daily Creative Challenge. The Daily Creative Challenge, you get a challenge every single day, a prompt where you get to design something, you get to share with the community, you get to get feedback from the community. There is the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge going on with Howard Pinsky right now, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on weekdays. So you guys should check that out. The other thing I wanna mention is we are doing an artist spotlight today. Yay! We are going to be celebrating a designer in the community about an hour and a half into the stream. If you want to be featured or you have a friend that you want to recommend, just check out the artist spotlight tab. It's right by the chat. You can't miss it. If you have any questions, feel free to put any questions in there and the moderators will help you guys out. But we will keep, uh, keep out for the designer that we're going to showcase in just a little while. So. Alejandra Aguilar, we're so excited to have you back for day number two. Tell us a little bit more about who you are for anyone who missed yesterday, as well as what they missed yesterday, all that cool work that we did together and where we're at today and where we're going. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for everyone coming back or who joined us on the first day and all the newcomers. Um, sad to have you on board with us. Um, and, you know, I'm, my name's Alejandra, but a lot of people call me Alex, so I go by either or. Um, and today I'm kind of going back into that movie that we were kind of started off on yesterday. A uh, quick rundown about me in case you missed it. Uh, again, again, my name in case you need to spell <laughs> it in the chat. Um, yeah, and I grew up in LA. This is LACMA. Go check it out. It's awesome. Uh, growing up in LA, uh, my first job was in a movie theater and that's kind of got me the movie bug uh, where I love movies and directors, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, then I went to Santa Cruz for a STEM degree. Uh, Santa Cruz is great. If you ever get the chance, come up here, take a hike, great campus. But I decided to kind of pivot, went to General Assembly. This is a good kind of, you know, a general summation of my process. One direction, pivot, new direction. and I, and our host actually does a lot of GA work too. Uh, so keeping in the GA family. Uh, I've done a bit of work here before on Adobe Live. This is me in an astronaut helmet, uh, both guest and host. And you know, since then I've been working as a product designer, uh, particular for a interior design company and have since moved into production design. And production design is a lot of working in the design system, working with other engineers and designers and trying to make sure everything fits into the design system, keep this consistent, accessibility, uh, all kinds of good things like that. And then, so for the next, so yesterday we kind of went and did a bit of a project introduction. Uh, we just kind of did a quick run through. We're gonna go through those kind of slides very quickly today here as well. Uh, we did a little bit of research inspiration, uh, a little bit of an, uh, information architecture and a mind map, and we got started with a wireframe. So today we're going to try to finish up those wireframes, which we kind of did. I did some updates, so we don't have to go through those again. And we're then going to work on the visual style. So we're going to try to figure out what's going to be our kind of branding, our colors, what our buttons are going to look like. Uh, and then also work on a design system as we're building those things out. It's really going to help us down the line when we want to build out further screens and just apply those visual styles from the get-go. Also with scaling, 
Uh, and then if we have time, maybe like a handoff, how do you work with engineers? How do you hand off those files to them? How do you make it so you don't have to do as much visual QA work at the um, Because that's, that's also very important to um, go through and audit those screens once they're built. Yeah, so the scenario was, uh, if you have a group of friends, how do you keep track of all the movies you guys decide to watch together and the suggestions you guys get from one another? Uh, so the opportunity is just click a quick, small little app where you can create these lists and share them with your friends. So these are some of the inspirations I found. Uh, they're a mixture of apps that kind of already do this and streaming services because people are very familiar with streaming services and even a Game Pass Xbox app. And I did that one because I wanted to try to gamify it. Uh, I want our users to feel a sense of accomplishment by finishing up lists. Because if we have a list and it's never ending, there's a sense of futility for that. And then our MVP really is sign up, log in uh, a watch list, search through movies, share with friends, cross out movies and see the progress. And I came up with these MVPs because these are the main objectives. These are the main things we need to be able to have people finish a list and share it, which was our main goal. This, this is the basic foundation that we need. Everything else after this, we can build on and expand. But in order for this to actually work, these are the things we kind of need. Uh, next up was an information architecture. Uh, we. This is a very shallow version of it. You can go into a lot more detail. I didn't want to go too crazy, uh, but this is kind of like our homepage, search movies profile, and then we kind of broke it down a little bit further with settings, edits, any other kind of information. I like doing an information architecture because it kind of brings an organization to, <laughs> to chaos. Uh, there's so many different items you have to consider and seeing them laid out here, it's kind of like an action plan. All right start a homepage, this is what I need to hit. All of these things I need to go into and then how do these connect together and things. Finally, oh no, those are assets. I am not gonna use that. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so we went into that. We did also do a bit of a mind map. This is like a quick little exercise to figure out all the things we might have to consider when building this thing out. Things like business requirements, tech consideration, user pain points and product features. Uh, these are pretty simple. Uh, again, just like the information architecture, you continue expanding on this, but I don't want to go too crazy. And I want to spend too much time on this because I do want to get into the wireframes. But I do want to emphasize research is really important when you're working on an app. Um, it just makes everything you start when you're doing the wireframes so much stronger, the foundation a lot stronger. So I highly recommend it. Cool. All right. So that was a very quick speed through of a bit of what we did yesterday and a bit about me and the work. And I also really, um, I welcome questions. Please throw them out there and just engage with us. We're here. Uh, we're here for two hours. We'd love to get to know you guys. Cool. So kind of worked on the homepage and the movie description. Uh, and we actually also asked everybody if you could suggest a name and we got Binget. Binget was the winner of a survey. So this is, we kind of designed a little bit of a lo-fi design system very quick to make it easier for us to start creating other wireframes. We got ourselves a title, a logo, the highlighted movies and your list along with a nav bar. Here we kind of have a large scale movie um, feature, you know, like a media or something, um, description, lists and recommendations, even a, how did you like this movie? Okay meh, middle meh, low meh. Uh, they all look the same. We got to change those out. <laughs> Yeah. And so for those who weren't here yesterday, this is like a list for all your favorite movies that you want to share with a friend, or maybe your friend is sharing movies um, with you that you might want to check out. And I can't recall, were we going to actually play the video inside or the movie inside the app or, or what were you planning on with that? That is a good question. Um, 
probably inside the app. So they'll probably be like a media player. It'll open up into like a black screen along with, with the movie. So, but I think I kind of changed it a little bit with, so I did some tweaks last night um, and it oh. kind of looks a bit more like this. I kind of flush it out and change a few things because when I left and it's always good to get up and walk away a little bit, take some time to yourself and come back. Sometimes you'll consider things you didn't quite consider up before. Um, one thing I tend to sometimes forget is even though I'm designing with the best scenario in mind, you have to design for the worst case scenario as well. And for instance, let's say that they only have five movies and they've already finished off three. So how does this look? Is this going to be a list of all of those movies? Um, how is it going to look with only two? So it's, I left, uh, left justified it. And I also added a little watched item right into the action movie itself, uh, poster itself. This is like the little place where the logo's going to go and the settings. I thought it's best to go ahead and give them access to settings and account information from the get-go. And if they want more about themselves instead, they can just go ahead and dig into the profile. One thing I forgot that was really important is adding a create list. I don't know how I forgot that, but I did. <laughs> I guess, yeah, that's, is that the main call to action you would say for this app? I, yeah, it would probably be the main call to action. So I would probably have to add it elsewhere in the homepage as well. Um, you no, know, I would think about having this be like right in the middle, really emphasized, but we only have four things and I can't think of a fifth one to add in here to kind of balance it out. So for now, we're just going to leave it as is, but we can always update this down the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the beauty of like the wireframes, right? It's like, okay, we can mess things about and change things and like, that's totally okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay to make um, changes and mistakes and you can always copy this. You know, I do that all the time. I'm, I'm always afraid of messing something up before and so I copy it over and then do what I need to do and go wild. Make multiple versions. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. It's always going to be like, um, what is it? Final, final version mm -hmm. 2.0. <laughs> yeah, I have many of those. <laughs> uh, so so the finals. big change there was, can you actually show the yeah, first you know version? What? That is a great idea. Why don't we really like, bring this over? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's justify this stuff. Added of you all. We don't need an edit. Account settings, spacing a little better. Added back, made this slightly bigger. I do think it's important to see what the progress is. And then added a view all. I did put a limit on how many you see here. I didn't want to feel too endless. So we can always go further in should we need to. And, and then added, added, added Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. You added like my list, friends, featured. That's changed too. That has changed. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I have kind of spaced those out. I figure, you know, it might be kind of cool down the line if the business wants to feature a certain playlists or maybe mm. a studio wants to feature a playlist of their movies like oh. Disney Plus and their Marvel movies. Do you want to see them in chronological order? Phases? Yeah, I love that. Because also maybe you don't have that many friends that have given you a list and but there's still like some cool lists that you can get that are featured or from other people i like that idea yeah maybe your friends don't like movies <laughs> i don't know why but you know what hey maybe maybe they're just not they're just not a fan um so yeah you can find other people's stuff and you can add to your list and and, and kind of gather as many of those from there um so i'd be thought that'd be kind of cool and then Let's go ahead and bring the other guy in here as well. Let me know what I do. Yeah, it's cool to see. Like, I always think it's great to see a designer's before and after, like the changes they made and understand why they made it. Um, this is also such an important thing that we have to do, you know, when we're getting going through the job interview or with, you know, with our other designers and getting feedback. It's like such an important part of the process to, to be able to explain. 
Yeah, absolutely. And one other reason why I made this Left Justify is that we are reading things Left Justified. It's kind of awkward to go from this left, left, middle, mm -hmm. left, left, left. It's like, okay, yeah. it's kind of, you could do that, but. Yeah, that's a good of, change. Kind of um, and with this, this is the movie description. Why don't we just say native. Name your layers. It helps with organization. I'm telling you, it helps so much. And if anyone in the chat too has anything that they, are you guys liking the changes that were made since yesterday? Those of you who are with us or even just seeing the changes from yesterday, today, if this is your first day, what do you guys think about it? Yeah, you can say you hate it. It only hurt <laughs> my feelings a little bit, but it's okay. This is this is kind of part of the uh, part of the course. Constructive mm -hmm. uh, feedback is always helpful in, um, in growing and learning. Definitely. So taking a stride is, is a good soft skill. So here we kind of changed this up. We kind of expanded this a little bit. Um, this is now more of a media section. It could be, it could be a video. It could be a, um, a picture. Kind of have to figure out like the engineering aspect of that. How is that going to work? How is it going to slide? At the very top is the nav bar. So we'll have like a back and a watch. It's kind of a little bit easier, especially if you're going to have something moving within the actual media section, it's probably best not to add a CTA to that area and just have, have it on its own, its own place. Next is a title with rating, your time, runtime, and genres. So, and then directly under that, it'll be like these called the action buttons on where to watch them for free and additional areas you can watch them if you need to pay for it or you don't have the service and stuff. And then below that will be the synopsis. I decided to add the synopsis, synopsis below the buttons because if these are in a list of yours, more than likely you kind of already have an idea why you added them. Uh, but on the flip side, if this is a featured one, you're, more, you're still more than likely going to try to figure out where it's at first, if you can even watch it on a streaming service that you have. If you end up having to pay six dollars to rent it you're probably going to want to know that before you start reading more information about it it's like okay well maybe we'll see yeah i hear you on that but this is this is a good area where you can test this with with people you know give it to somebody have them go through it and get their feedback on it how do they feel about it do they like it do they prefer this or that and you kind of make those changes based on those things it's really it's simple to you know rearrange the layout Mm -hmm. Especially when you have like a design system ready to go, it's like, okay, quick, switch things out. Uh, read more additional information rows too, I thought were really helpful. Uh, I use these collapsible rows and we can add things here like cast and crew. You know, who was in it? Um, trivia. IMDB has trivia. I always like going in there. I'm not sure how much, how many of it is actually true, but I like to believe all of it. Mm -hmm. um, no one would tell me different. That's actually not true. They're probably, it's probably. And I always like reviews. Oh yeah. <laughs> how did I forget reviews? Oh, this is... That's a good, good one. one. Yeah, reviews. And then we we'll have things like featured and following lists. It could be your lists or maybe friends. Maybe this is on a list on like three of your lists. You can knock out three lists, one stone. I'm pretty sure that's not how the saying goes, but. <laughs> you modify it, that's fine. I, you know what, I changed the layout of that, of that, um, of that <laughs> saying, see that? <laughs> I really like this new version here. It flows much nicer. I like that large title and the image and it feels like, yeah, just looking at it from this bird's eye view, it, it feels like it flows a lot better as well. Just easier on the eyes too. So nice work. Thank you. Yeah, I gotta, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why I also did this here and made it like a bit more pronounced is when, when we have readers, like screen readers or people who have, uh, have difficulty seeing it, they can be read out loud. So this is like an H1, we can call it H2 but it's gonna flow and read that. And then it's gonna read the ratings and, and this. This is really isn't as important to a person with seeing disabilities. 
and then would to know about the title and all these extra items. So sure. readers will probably script, um, skip that. Let's go straight into these kind of things. And how it's built will also be read. Those things are mm -hmm. kind of important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Cool. cool. So let's dive in. Unless anybody has any questions. I don't have the chat out with me, so. I don't see any questions yet, but I'll, right. I'll definitely let you know. Uh, I did add Freaky in here. Woohoo! And I did happen to catch this movie yesterday uh, as I was doing a little bit of these updates, and it is pretty fun. So if you like slasher <laughs> films and a little bit of comedy in your stuff, I highly recommend it. You are like being really true to your theory of like sharing lists and being able to, to like, be able to recommend things and learn new things from other people by like actually taking that suggestion I had yesterday, watching the movie and everything like that. I feel like this is the true MVP of the It's of true, the app. yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta, gotta you know, do what I preach. Yeah. <laughs> um, we do have a question here from Masayu. Hi, Alex. How is your ideation process? Do you defend your design during the process if anyone disagrees with your design? Disagrees with your design? I try not to be too defensive about like my, my designs because there's always a other side of an argument, and getting to the heart of what that argument is about is kind of the key to discussion. Um, I guess I say argument, but it really shouldn't be an argument, it should be a discussion, a conversation about the design. A lot of things you have to ask yourself when you're designing out and iterating, and I do a lot of iterations constantly. There's, like, as you can see here, this is just one iteration. Um, but I would probably go through 10. But is asking yourself, why are you doing this? Is there a reason you're doing this? Uh, for instance, I was testing out on this update, I had a little new tag up here. But why did I add that? Did I just add that for the visual flair? Does it actually add anything to this? Does the user, what does the user gain from knowing this is a new list? Nothing. So I took it out. Um, so asking yourself why is, is a really important question. And then getting feedback is, you should try to get to the key of why they're saying that and does it have merit? If it does, you should take that into consideration. I hope that answered that question. Um, if not, I could go into more detail. Yeah, I think that was a, a good answer to that. And it's like, we try not to be defensive as designers and really do a lot of self-editing and be open to a lot of feedback and um, really having an answer or a reason for everything we design, everything we put on the screen should have, should have a clear reason. Um, so Absolutely. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just grab something real quick. I'm going to grab. No, did I? Okay, let's do. I'm looking for the top of this iPhone. I think I have as a component in here already. I've already kind of started saving certain components. That's another component. And let's do. Oh, status bar iPhone. There we are. And so I got, for those who didn't see this yesterday, I got these from the Apple design resources. You can go and find them online and download. They have XT toolkits, like you could see here. There's a ton of information you can look at. They have screen guides. They have built-in iOS modules. It's great and really fun and a, great, a good way to learn how to utilize what the iPhone has. And same thing goes for Android too. And they have their own material resources that you can utilize. And online as well, they have a huge extent of articles to learn about different design aspects. Just Google material design. Okay, so we got that and I did make a logo. I'm excited. Where are the logo? There we are. Okay. Benjit. Oh, so cute. There you go. Actually, why am I doing that when I can make it a logo? So that's what I'll do. So I'm going to click on this, hit Command K, done. So you're making logo. it a uh, component. 
yeah, I'm making it a component. So logo. Okay, cool. Then call this medium. That's all set. Yeah. Engit. I might do is actually. Oh, no. Is make this a toolbar because I can see myself using this quite a few times. So what should we make this? Let's make this 48. So component is because you're planning on using that logo over and over again throughout the app. And you're just yeah. pressing command K in order to do that. What do you think are some things that you would not want to make a component? Things that I would not want to make a component. Uh, I try to componentize most things. I would say body text, you don't need to. Um, user generated content is kind of tough to componentize. Because like most everything we are typically reusing again and again, it feels like calling most, most everything we could start to make into components, icons and. Icons, yeah, it, it's kind of hard. That's a, that's a really good question. Uh, I would love to know what other people think, what you should componentize. Yeah, if you have any questions on components too, or the way you use components, let us know. So it seems like you're using a new icon style for- I am, that this. is a good. I did download that Google Material Design and I kind of, I'm using their, their icons. Mm. Uh, I could build these out or I could just use theirs for now. Oh, now yeah, normally for sure. I, you would probably want to develop out your, your own icons for a, if you're in a business, but this is kind of make believe. So we're going to pretend these. I built these. And I look. I'm a great designer. Look at that. This is fantastic. Um, do you like the look of these ones better than the one you used previously? I, I do. And the reason why I say that is because these all kind of flow and look a bit more consistent than the plugin I was using. The plugin I was using is great. Mm -hmm. I'm not knocking it, but it kind of pulls from so many different sources. It's difficult to achieve consistency like the look of consistency across the entire platform. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think using scale a bit better too. So these are, a, should be a 24, but they believe these might be SVGs. Uh. So let's put this in here. We have a few questions from Voodoo Val. One is, um, is can you tell us a little bit more about the screen reading and designing with visual impairments in mind? Yeah, I, you know, I am by no means an expert. There's always so much more to learn about accessibility, but a lot of times um, with screen readers, it tends to highlight different areas and then read those aloud. So like on, on a native app, you can turn on the iOS screen reader and it starts, starts kind of reading all of those items, but there, there are certain application programs that only read H1 titles. If it's like a really long screen and they really want to search for reviews, they can search through H1s or H2s. Um, sometimes when it's highlighting buttons, it'll focus on that and then it'll require a additional input for them to move forward or actually go into that. So for instance, here, this check mark box, if it starts reading that, it'll read this, then it'll read this information here, focus on this view all, and it'll say aloud, view all button. But you might want to add additional information to that, um, for example, view all of this list. So I guess I'm going a bit of a tangent because there's just so much involved in this. But either way, it, it's great to just go in and try to take a look at yourself. There's a lot of resources online. Um, and just try to think about these things when you're going from into the wireframe. Um, try to think 
Are these colors going to be difficult for someone to see? Someone who's colorblind. Um, yeah, it's there, there's so many questions. Uh, it's there's so many so many different answers to that to that question. But yeah, I implore you guys to go and find online resources. There's a lot of good things online to learn how to think with those things in mind. Yeah, and I think like yesterday you were saying, you know, with the posters, you you could just have the images of the posters and people have to read it. But then if we think about, you know, some sort of having to do screen reading, they won't be able to pick up that information from the poster unless you do have potentially alt text, which is a whole other thing to explain what's happening in the image. But it's probably best to have that title like you decided to, to write it out there and like to have that text there so people can understand there is an image, what's happening in the image. This is the title of it. This is the rating of it. It's like reading, you know, left to right, top to bottom, and it makes sense. So I think that's like, those are, yeah, all the decisions that you made yesterday. Um, it makes a lot of sense from that perspective. We also have another question. Lee's asking, do you use a formula for typographic scales? Um, not particularly. I've always worked with people who've already developed out the full design system and typography cells. Um, mm -hmm. I like scales of eight, so I try to stick to those or are divisible by four. Mm -hmm. Four, I, and there's like a lot of consensus, like body text would be 16 and 14, titles maybe 18, 24. It's a lot of it is also feel. Um, so for me, I don't really have a way to like a formula for those things. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah. There is I mean, like a you? one site I have, and I'll put it in the the chat that you can use that people can use for. Um, oh, it's a cool. real basic. It's a real basic site. So you know, if you guys want to take a look at it, typographic scale, it it can be helpful. Um, but a lot of times, too, people are kind of just winging it and eyeing it as well. Um, so I'll put that in there. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's see what is this. So I'm not. What I'm doing now is I already have my toolbar so this is a 48 and you know what i should be making this into a component so let's do this i can actually make this bind a component as well so why don't we do that and so what i'm going to do with this component i'm going to move you so it's ad hoc design system so i've got my atoms i like to go kind of like the Add a method, to small primitives that build up into larger molecules and components. Let's call this icon button. And now I always have this. So down the line, I can actually make modifications to this and it'll propagate to all of the other icon buttons in this wireframe. So right now it's just default state. So we'll keep it there. All right, this is all set. Our type is going to be Sophia Pro. And this is going to be French 2. So how do we do that? I can actually just add a character style. There it goes. Look at that. So you're adding the character style here into the assets panel. Mm -hmm. um, what, like, why would you do that? And what, why would you need to do that? Uh, it, it makes things easier. I could just like, uh, you don't have to do that, but it's a good way to organize all your type styles mm. in one area. You, you can lay them out on a, on a sheet, which is also helpful. But if I were to start typing things like, uh, and, Venture zone and it's in Roboto Mono. I could instead just do this. Uh, yeah, you could just easily click it and change click it. Click it and just change it. I don't have to redo all of this. In mm -hmm. here. Really saves time. It, it does. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And then this is going to be our kind of kicker. So let's add that in here too. All right. Cool. 
And now we can go ahead and move this over. I'm just taking care of the pixel stuff now because that makes it easier down the line. So you like at this stage try to make things somewhat like pixel perfect from the get-go in the I high did. fidelity. Cool. Yeah. What things are you using to make sure that it is where you want it's it perfect. to be. Mm -hmm. I'm just using right now the command option or the option button. Mm -hmm. So when I go in here and just hit option, you can see where it's at and lays, lays out against other elements. Um, also, when I'm thinking about this kind of tool, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's just it's just the option button. You could. I mean, I'm not really sure other ways to do that. There are grids you can use. I'm struggling with this now. Far. And you're also like, yeah, yesterday I remember you're doing a 24 pixel mark. Um, I am doing a 24 pixel margin, side. and that is a good thing to bring up. So oh, you can yeah, actually add those guy. rules and back in here. That's. Trying to do math in my head. There we go. I already got this in 24. I just need to line it up. There it goes. Okay. All right. So this is now a master component. I don't have to rebuild this thing ever again. We're going to go ahead and put this down here. We're just going to call these markings. I'm putting this in here to make it easier for me to find things down the line. And for other designers, if they ever come in here and start working on it, on something, they could always find the master components. Yeah, I think like that's the way I do it too. I design it in real time, like in the app, in context, and then I take the master component, bring it out into another artboard and then have the copy of it inside mm -hmm. the screen. So it's kind of like a three-step process. Yeah, it, it takes a little... It, Adds a little bit of time, but I think it's really worth it. Yeah. All right, we're making this into a text link. I think I'm doing this because it kind of helps me keep things consistent. Whereas I build things out like, oh, that's right. I'm using 14. I'm not using 16 text link or a kicker doesn't change from 10 to 12. Yeah, consistency is like pretty quite important right, as we're designing. So it can be hard to remember those things, oh, yeah. all the, everything that you're using, all the, the typography styles and sizing. So it's good to have that character styles. All right, so we got the top. Let's do this. Wonder if I should make this a component or not. Let's, let's leave it as is. I think we're okay. Uh, let's make this progress bar a component though. So we're gonna go ahead and take this here, and make that a component. So now we have, oh, let's put this four. We don't need to do that big. And now this is progress bar. And we can actually make that into a slightly bigger component. We call this. Okay. So Operation you have a with... component within a component. I do. Yeah. Good tracker. What should have done is broken that out down here as well, but it didn't.
Yeah. So you're really showing the process of starting to build out a design system and people always ask like, what the, what's, how's the first, what's the first step in creating one? And it's people sometimes think it's going straight into like creating the components, but oftentimes we really actually have to start from the screen design to then actually know what components we need to create before we just start creating the design system. So I like that you're showing this process. Yeah, you never, you don't know. Sometimes you, I mean, you can start building out like basic things like buttons and, and, and such, but you'll, you'll really see them being in use if you actually build the wireframes and kind of do a bit of a visual style and then convert those into components. Um, mm -hmm. There are a bunch of different ways you could do these. Let's do 45%. Yeah, 45%. So now I kind of change the colors here. It's great. Is oh that's right these are not components yet so I need to copy this over. Let's see, I can actually make this stacked so that way it's always going to be twelve. So now, oh, nope, where is this? There, now all the lays out. So, so. you had um, put stacks on the those two different groups. I did, yes. So this is a this is one grouping, and I actually okay. have this stacked as well. Oh, I don't have that stacked. There, now it's stacked. So now, anytime I make changes in here, it'll auto lay out based off those that spacing that I had declared. Okay, what was the spacing between there? This on one stacks? was. Four. Oh, okay. So that's four pixels. So anytime you add or remove, it'll remain or keep that mm -hmm. the distance. Yeah, let's go ahead and do stacks. that. Yeah, that makes things four. so much easier to when you're like adding, moving, changing things in this phase. Absolutely. That a lot of times when you're gonna have these things out and you're gonna show your boss or a few other people, they're like, oh, can you change this? And having these kind of auto layout features makes things a lot easier for you to make those kind of quick changes. So I have this at 12. Oh. Kind of not feeling it. Let's try eight. Now let's go back to 12. Because I, I feel as though this is a little bit too close to that view all button. Mm. And I want ample space for a um, hit detection on, on that. So. Then again, this isn't going to go anywhere, I don't think. I mean, it's okay, but let's just keep it at 12. All right. We got our title. Let's get into the cool movie poster. I know this is the thing everyone's been waiting for. The feature. <laughs> Ooh, let's go in here. Oh, wait, one second. I should actually be doing... I won't have to redo this entire thing over and over again. This is in Source Sense Pro. They're not supposed to be that. It's 10. Okay. Four. And let's make these a group stack. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing. Turning on stacks. Stacks, man. So helpful. Now this is a new component. Oh yeah, you can do stacks within a component as well. So combining those two features together. Yeah, exactly. So this is 48, but we already have an icon button. So we don't need, we don't need this. Get out of here. We don't need you. We need icon button. We're gonna put this at eight. So that looks like this component. Also, if you are just joining, this is day two. We're creating a movie sharing app. 
And when I say we, I really mean you, Alejandro. <laughs> I'm yeah, just it's watching. A effort. It's all right. <laughs> and yesterday we had done some wireframes, the basic structure of the app and the main two screens. And then today Alejandro is making it into a high fidelity design. He's taking all the elements in the wireframe and converting them and starting to add the pictures and the final typography and colors, really making it come to life now that he's happy with the basic structure for those two pages. So that's what we're watching now. Yeah, let's see if this is gonna work. I'm trying to figure out if I can make this a mask. Something that I do as well that could be helpful is like I'll take a image and then copy it and then I just um, option command V or shift command V into the into the um, shape and then it'll just kind of make it mask it in there. Oh, cool. Let's try that. So command V inside. Com yeah, commands command C, copy it and then command option command V inside. Well, that works too. Now we do, I want to do this. I want to ungroup component. I'm going to make this a component. Put this in here. And I'm going to actually, so my plan is I'm, I'm making this a component so I can make variations on this poster and I just yeah. have a bunch of things inside. I can actually just choose whichever poster I want to. Yeah. I hear you. That makes sense. Cool. There it goes. Sorry, that took way longer than it should have. And let's go with that. Now we're going to make this a component. So the movie poster, press icon button. Now this movie information card. So you're going to go over here. And let's go with, oh, I thought I got on the dead. No, let's go back to credits. Alejandro, how long have you been doing like design or been an artist in some way or creative? Um, we got people oh. in the chat talking about it with themselves. So I was like, okay, let's join in on this. Yeah, it's been, I think I did GA in 2018, 2019. So I want to say a couple, two or three years now. Two to three years, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I would love to know, yeah, in the chat, you know, how long you guys have been creatives and maybe where you're at with, with your journey, are you a student? Are you learning online? Are you a self learner? Um, I guess kind of probably a combination of all the things, <laughs> learning at a, from a program, but doing a lot of learning online because you still have to like, it's not it's not enough just to learn from a program. I think there's constant learning that needs to be involved. So oh, I can already tell everyone's probably a self learner that's here currently, I would imagine. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's so much I learned outside of the program as well, uh, but you have to be active and find those resources to learn from. Where um, do you think you've like learned the most outside of the program? Uh, probably my first job. Uh, there was like a lot of work, a lot of just jumping right into it, a lot of making mistakes, uh, get deep in your feet in, talking to people. But the biggest one probably my first my first position. Um, yeah. How about you? Yeah, I think definitely learning on the job and learning from my mistakes and like 
if I had to do something that I haven't done before, I would just like research that topic <laughs> online from every resource I can, you know, YouTube, reading books. And there was one I read called um, Zag, I think. And it was about branding because I was going to do a branding session. And I was like, I've never done that before. So let me, <laughs> let me learn this. <laughs> so it was a lot of um, just learning as, as I went. Exciting, but scary. <laughs> So how it always is. Uh, okay, I am just double checking this. Sorry. So let's go in here. Oh, this is still a mass group. I see what you're doing in there. To move this guy. There we go. 12, it's perfect. There we go, we could fix that. Okay, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Uh, this is gonna annoy me, but it's okay. So let's go in here and glue this. Let's get this out of here. You're out of here and you're out of here. We're going to put this at 16. And we're going to make you a mini version. I'm just going to save you in here. Delete all this stuff. Right, we're going to have to make a round button. So let's do that. So I'm going to make a variation to this. We're going to call it round. It goes. So we have a round state. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Now we're going to go ahead and add a check mark? We're going to do a check mark. Oh. <laughs> that is not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like tricky to get it right in there where you need to. So that's such a cool thing with the component. You can like just drag and drop and replace, replace that. You already had the check mark then as a component. I did. Yes. Cool. So I had already added all of these in here because I wanted us to save some time. I didn't want you guys to see me struggle like I did with this dang thing over here. Uh, but yeah, it's just a quick command K. You can see how these are all kind of listed out. So we're going to change this filling. Let's go with maybe, let's go with white. It's cool. Let's do. 80%. Keep this. Masai is asking if there's going to be any feature, surprise features coming up for Adobe Max. And all I can say is yes. Oh, is it, is it the dancing? <laughs> I, I got a new, I got a sneak peek, but I'm not allowed to say anything. But I, all I can say is I'm very excited for for what's to come. Um, and if you guys haven't signed up or haven't been to Adobe Max, I highly recommend highly recommend it. Um, I will be doing, I will be speaking as well for Adobe Max showing, I'll be showing the new features, doing the community chat, showing XD features from the perspective of the community. So I'm really excited to do that because I'm excited. Have you ever been able to attend any of the Max sessions, Alejandro? I have. They are so much fun. I highly recommend them. Uh, I was able to go to Adobe Max a couple of years ago. Now, yeah. so oh, in fun. person, in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you give us yeah. a, a teaser trailer? What's going to happen? I can. No? Okay. <laughs> I'm under strict NDA for that, <laughs> but all I can be is like, yeah, this is my face and how excited I am. 
Um, so if you are just tuning in, we are creating a high fidelity from a low fidelity that was created yesterday and putting in all the colors, typography, just finished the first poster there. You've got like the list that you're gonna start, uh, that Alejandro is starting to work on now. And we're working a lot with components and showing that process of building a design system as you're designing, which is really important. Um, so that's something you guys are interested. This is definitely best session to learn all about building that first design system. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are gonna see me on here design, like build this thing out, uh, make a struggle with these things sometimes, but it's kind of part of the process. So you got this. Uh, I'm thinking about making the background now, kind of have an idea of how to create the colors on some of these uh, components. So I'm thinking maybe a gradient, uh, let's see. I have a few colors in here. Thought that might work. Okay, that's definitely not going to be the actual <laughs> thing. You got to just got to give me a second. Bright uh, red. Bright red. I want people to know that they're on binge it. <laughs> I feel like it really fits with the freaky poster. Kind of does, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's try this. Maybe a little lighter. No. Okay, let's try that and let's remove this. I also like that you have Halloween specials. Like, hollow I love Halloween movies. I would love if anyone had Halloween movies they could recommend because I feel like I exhausted a lot of, of movies and Halloween is just around the corner. People are already starting to like sell Halloween decorations in the store I've seen. So already? Like, oh, it's coming. Yeah. Oh no. Sounds it's coming. It's already here. Be a bit lighter. Be a bit darker here. Ah, that looks a little bit better. We're gonna change that part out, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for. Kind of reminds me of like those. Like going into movies where they turn down the lights, or like and like mm. the walls are all kind of red. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I like that. I'm going for okay. Let's see. Oh, there it is dark mode. There it goes. See, that's what's cool thing about instances. You just switch between the two. Yeah, so there's the two different states for the same component, and then you're able to just switch it over. Exactly. And that's good. That's cool. This white. All right, it's slowly come together, guys. Yeah. Suddenly it's starting to like really come together once you put the background. It helps. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. See, I don't so have if to. You go Is it good? Yeah, I was going to just mention like. If you guys, if the audience is enjoying this session and you guys enjoy watching designers, Adobe Live now hosts uh, live streamers on Behance, kind of like all day, all night. So if you're interested and in also maybe even learning like a new tool, I'm not really good at Illustrator. So like, I'd like to explore more people designing Illustrator Live. Like that's something I'd like to do. That that would be a great like first step into into the tool. Like you don't have to get into it yourself. You could just watch other people and be like, oh, okay, that's how you do that cool thing. Maybe I'll try to recreate it. Um, have you ever checked any other live streams out, Alejandro? I have. I you know I see Voodoo Val here all the time. Oh fantastic. yeah. Highly recommend checking her, her stuff out. Ooh, what does Voodoo Val work on? Uh illustrations here and there. Um it's been a minute. So I haven't caught anything recently, but that's cool. Yeah, Voodoo Val, let us know what, what you work on. I want to check out your streams. <laughs> that's what I want to do. We could all um, support each other here in the chat. Okay, so 
I have like this thing kind of going. Um, yeah, that's okay. I'm not gonna fuss over that. So we got a we got a check mark button going. Let's make this black. Yeah, we we'll do that. Not gonna fight over this too much, but let's make it a little darker. Just to make sure that there's enough contrast between the white of this uh, title and the background. That's kind of what I'm going for. So a little too dark. The okay, white from the, the text. Yeah. So I'm gonna 18 is fine. Let's do let's do that. Let's add that in here. If it's not already, it's not. So movie title text. Thanks. Cool. All right. Um, time. How's that feeling? Okay. That's what, that's that good. looks really nice to me. Yeah. Cool. For some reason, the other one didn't quite want to work. So we're just going to go and not look at the lines this right now. Any other time I would spend as much time needed in order for this to work, but let's not do that. We have a so. question from Lee um, for you, which mm -hmm. is what was the single most enjoyable piece of work you have ever done? Oh, putting me on the spot to say it daily life. <laughs> um, a single piece of work I enjoyed the most. I would probably say, yeah, Adobe Live is pretty fun. I always enjoy coming on here and hanging out with guests and hosts and going, engaging with the chat and working on the design. It's always so cool seeing how other designers work. Uh, as for a singular piece, uh, it's like picking children, like which is your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good sign. No, I all kind of like them. Um, I did do a Adobe Design Jam. That was pretty fun, and we did like a refugee app to help help people who are coming into the country and not and uh, getting to uh, getting access to resources. That was our our idea. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like that. That's probably my favorite piece. But a bit of activism. Mm -hmm. that That's awesome. Right, so I'm going to group these. Second and so two. We have about 30 minutes, a little less than 30 minutes before we do the artist spotlight. We are going to showcase an artist's profile or a designer's profile on Behance and give them some props. It's going to start about 26 minutes. Yeah, time flies. Okay. I know. <laughs> Look at here with ideas of grandeur getting through all of these things. And all right, well, let's 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 go for it. Let's see how much we can get done. So I at least want to get this part done. Or this part done. Let's go with this part done. All right, so we got these components. Let's do a little bit bigger. We know it's got to be a little less than 375 at 327. I've been designing for iPhone for quite a bit of time, and I still sometimes have to remember what it is with 24 pixel marks on the side. So let's do. You're talking about how the width of this component you're the creating and making component. sure you have 24 pixels on on each side. Yeah, I like to make sure there's enough padding on on either side. Um, mm -hmm. It's a good guideline they recommend and it's something I like to stick to. Yeah. So let's do eight. How about you? Do you have any piece of work that you like really love? I, I still love this project I did a couple years ago called Envoy, which was a app a redesign for a electric car service so that you can rent cars 
electric scooters, electric bikes, all through this app. And what I loved most about it was that there was a, a physical component to it. So I could actually test it out the car and that experience and tested out the, the scooter experience. And so I love the combination and just not kind of stepping outside of just the digital space and how that um, connects to some sort of physical aspect. So I, I, real, I realized like, oh, that's a passion of mine. So we'll see where that takes me later. Yeah, that's so cool. It's, um, it's very cool being able to see and feel your work it's one thing to design but you know, have to actively go out and and have mm -hmm. something tangible along with it it's neat yeah definitely okay so i just made a slight change to this uh, yeah i wonder if anyone in the chat also is do you have a favorite piece of work you've done or anything it doesn't have to be you know a ux ui design but what's something that you've you feel proud of as a as of late Anything you're working on, any sample case, like even just fun projects that you're working on. Yeah, I'd love to hear them out. All right, so I'm just going to do that. I'm just building a progress bar in this little uh, component. So this is going to be our list. Let's see, I'm gonna add title. So I did say romantic movies last time, so let's stick to it. Romantic Yay. <laughs> movies. Uh, I am terrible with titles when I'm put on the spot. So let's see, uh, let's just go romance. <laughs> Can someone give me a title? I don't I don't know. Uh, you mean different than the, the title you have there? Romantic movies to watch with my boo? I liked that one. You like that one? All right, let's <laughs> yeah. stick to it. And take movies to watch with my boo. Yeah. I would be really happy if I found that list on my husband's app. I'd be like, oh, you're so thoughtful. <laughs> okay. We'll stick to it then. So this might actually be a little bit long. So this is a good way to look. How would we figure out how to do this? There's two lines. Maybe we can just reduce it down to 14. Does that look? Oh, we don't need this to be bold. You know? No, it's still doing it. It's okay. Let's do. All right, uh, what else are we gonna do here? Oh, you know what would be a good idea? Is to get icon button and add a way for people to go ahead and make additional changes. Let's do this 32. We don't want that. Let's try. So I wanna give people different options um, straight from the get-go and that's what I'm kind of trying to figure out. So if they're in here and they're scrolling through and they see their list, do they have to actively go into the list to make any changes or share or do you see a quick bit of information about it? Um, so it's it's not a bad idea to have a little options button right in there. So beforehand, this was a social thing. It had kind of like these kind of shared profiles uh but if they were to hit this option they could just see it within that area and then they could mm. expand into another place where they see all the information about this particular playlist uh watch list not playlist but you can see where i got the inspiration from um cool so this is starting out coming together slightly to um this border what helps is always adding a picture. All right, what's what's romantic? Uh, I don't think Pacific the, or this romantic. About time one, all the way to the right. About time? Yeah, that was romantic. <laughs> I, I really <laughs> like this movie. I liked it a lot. It's really sad, actually. <laughs> I was uh -huh. really surprised how sad it was. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this movie, it's about this guy right here. 
Dominic, Dominic Hall, uh, he was in Star Wars. Um, he discovers that his family can travel through time. Yeah, this was a romantic movie that my husband was willing to watch with me. So <laughs> that was a good thing. I felt like it was more about the dad and the son. Yeah. And, and there was like, kind of, what do you do when you have that ability? Like, what kind of person are you? If you can kind of go through time or redo things. Yeah. I would, I would try to win the lottery. Let's be honest. <laughs> what would I do? Hmm. Go back in time and go watch a Spice Girls concert. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. What would you guys do? Oh, yeah, what, would you, what, would what would you guys do with the chat? You can go back in time, redo something. The Star Wars time. prequels. The sequels, I don't know. <laughs> Not watch something, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> Would undo that. We just lost like half our streams for that one comment. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. So we got ourselves a title, uh, but we're going to need a bit more information than just that. So let's see what we named it romance. But if this is a featured list, Maybe we want to know a bit more about what the genres are in there. Uh, we already have a bit of information about how many are in the list. Um, my particular progress, this progress probably won't be there for future components, but the, the reason why we're building this out as a kind of a component is that we can change things out pretty quickly, uh, create variants, uh, things like that. So let's figure out, let's say this is a new romance. It's not. Uh, I will just repeat. I think we need this to be this big. So let's make this. Lee said he could, if he could go back in time, it would be to study UX 15 years ago. <laughs> I don't know if even UX, was that term even coined then by then? Maybe, maybe know, right, right around that question. point. You would have been like one of the first. Um, to study at least with that specific title. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, it was a state of UX back then. When did that iBook come out? That was, was that 10 years ago? I don't know. It's a good question. Love if someone could like chime in and let us know. So this Voodoo is Val romance. said, huh? Oh, go ahead. Voodoo Val said that she feels like Underworld should definitely be in the Halloween list. I do oh, think that's a really good movie. I agree. I thought she was going to say romance. I'm like, if, could sure, be. I'm all for it. That could be. Underworld? Could, yeah. There was a romance there. With that uh, like hybrid guy and the main girl. It was quite romantic to me. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I sure you know what let's skip the comedy part and let's add the add the horror <laughs> it's now in here this is part romance of romance horror romance horror that's like yeah that's like a perfect combination where you have like some action some something like that for maybe my husband and then the romantic part for me and then that's our compromise that would be my list movies that we can compromise in the household Okay, now it's not going to become a list. I hope you know that. This is now. <laughs> uh, also, see. we've got just a little over 15 minutes until we do the artist spotlight. Never enough time. I know. It's like a mantra on uh, all of my designs. Never enough time. All right. Let's make this 65. I don't like that. Let's keep it. And let's remove this background. Kind of make this guy. There we go. A little better. I don't like the spacing here. Let's remove this spacing and bring it down. Two, eight.
Thank you. All right, let's check, let's check this out. We'll make this into a component. I'm not gonna move you around because we're trying to get this done. So let's put this back in here. How's that look a bit? Not too bad. Yeah, nice. Change the line height. Change the line height just a bit because I think we can save a little space and it's still readable. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's do that. That's good. This cap. Yep, so this thing can expand up to here. Give me. And this thing could only go up to three and then show however many additional tags. So thinking about this, so like this component, this is interesting. We have the title and we have a list of 10 different movies, each one of them having their own associated tags denoting the genre. So that's how kind of our back end would kind of sort out a bunch of this information. So then how does like the playlist itself feature the top, I uh, feature all of these tags and there's really no way to do that, but could probably working with an engineer just show the top most tags associated and then just kind of denote that there are additional kind of genres in there. So mm, first one yeah. will be romance, drama, horror. So you kind of see, it's kind of like the ingredients list on a, on a food label. Like mm -hmm. the first one's always the one with the most. So we would go ahead and show that romance would be the most featured kind of move genre within this playlist. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Let's do this. Let's feature a title. This is going to be called list. I think a good idea is to add a title here. I know on our mock-up we didn't, uh, but uh, having a list will make it easier for people to find via the H's. So let's do that. We also kind of had a question from Jamil that asked um, about the 60, 30, 10 color rule, color rule. Is that something that you use or do you tend to wing it? Or how do you feel about that rule? Um, I tend to wing it. I do think it's a good rule, but I'm also not the strongest visual designer. I've always been more of a product designer, working on a bit more on the UX side of things. Uh, but that, that's a good question. How do you feel about that? I feel like, I mean, you're, I think you're kind of already using it right n now, whether, yeah, I guess it's conscious or not, maybe just because so ingrained used in to there. using it. Yeah. That's, so there's like that background that's like 60%, um, the red color, 60% of what we're seeing. And then we have 30% might be like that dark, darker color perhaps. And then yellow is that 10% accent color that's being used. So. I think it's like kind of already happening. Cool. Look at that. It's already in there. I just, I just do naturally. <laughs> Not to do my own horn. Um, there you go. Text color. All right. So I'm doing is kind of a version of this. Now we could just have it. So it shows my list, friends and feature. Um, but then it's kind of just looks like an area like that. Like we, it just kind of goes right into it. It just kind of shows my list, friends features. It doesn't tell us what friends are. We could assume it's friends list, but then that would be kind of confusing. Like we featured what? This all this says is list. And these could denote other things. We would have to assume and we would have to let the user assume what that is. And I'd rather not do that. I don't have to. So instead what we're gonna do is name this section list. And this is why we kind of have this separator bar mm -hmm. to show this is now a new section. This is your featured list, which we should correct because we do have the feature, your featured list. And then it goes into all lists that you are associated with, except for featured. This is still a iffy, this is a um, H, like quarter four plan. Whoop, not, didn't mean to do that. So, not that so let's go all, let's add that here. Let's do padding. Okay, let's do, that's fine. Let's put 
goes a four. This pen is way too much. It's eight. Also, very long button. So you're bringing it down into into um, what categories now? I'm going to break it down to all to uh, yours because we have lists now already denoting what this is. So we don't have mm -hmm. to add additional information into these buttons. And the less information you add into buttons, the the better. Um, I, I mean, in a way that you don't want to add a sentence of text in a button. Mm. If you can convey yeah. the least amount of information possible, that's best. You can add an icon to re to really uh, reaffirm what your the context of the button is. Uh, one thing I don't always recommend is having an icon always by itself, unless it's it's something that everyone knows about. Like home, everyone knows what it is. Search bar, everyone knows what it is. Um, but if it's something that people don't always see, I would highly recommend always adding some kind of text for additional context. Um, so like, I would add an icon here with text as opposed to just being an icon for yours. I don't have the icon for you or all, so we're just gonna stick to text. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Like yeah. if you can make it easier for someone to understand what your icon means, it would be best, yeah, if you can label them with your buttons. Um, it's also always kind of better to be on the safer side, I think, because you have different types of audiences. All different types of people love movies. So many types might be using your this app. Exactly. So let's move this. Oh. So I'm making this harder. I should just use the repeat grid. What am I doing? Okay. So 12, 12, okay. So now let's go ahead and show that this is not on. So how do we do this? We have a few different ways. I do want to, normally I would make this in component, but I'm trying to save time. So I won't do that, but I highly recommend once you start finalizing your visuals for the, how you want these buttons to work, make it into component, create those variations, and you don't ever have to recreate anything. It's going to be consistent across multiple platforms and they scale. You can actually see how they will scale on those other, other platforms. So let's just move right up. Long though, well, how is our time? We've got six and a half minutes till the artist spotlight. Okay. All right. All right. And so, yeah, I like that you're using padding here so that the padding stays consistent even though you've changed the labels on the buttons. Exactly, yeah. It really, really helps. Um, let's see. So, you know what we'll do? We'll just do this. We don't need padding here because we just do this. We shared, and let's let's leave features on the cutting room floor. Okay. For now, all right. So now we know this one is the one that is being displayed. Let's grab this guy. I feel like we're about to see it all come together now and just <laughs> with this magic. repeat grid. Woo! Bam. There you go. Nice. It's, it's, it's coming together. Let's see. List. I'm going to put you guys in two. That's good. Cool. So it's kind of coming together, but we just still need. Oh, do need this guy Try to get away from us. No. There we go. All right, finally the app bar. Do you think you yeah. could do that in five, less than five minutes, the app bar? All right, let's do it. 
<laughs> Alejandro's challenge, design challenge. All right, let's, let's see, icon button. I already have these, look at that, thinking ahead. Ooh. Oh yeah, this is gonna, because you already made components for all the icons here and you're gonna replace them just by dragging and dropping. Wow, the magic of components. So helpful, so helpful. But it's a true testament if I could do this in those five minutes. I know. <laughs> Just click the no. Okay, uh, person, where is any person? Where is he? Her. Don't you do this? Yeah, to sometimes me? I think you need to zoom. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. Sometimes the zooming helps. <laughs> Don't need you guys. 24. Look at that. It's already set up. We're going to put this at six. We're going to make you guys. This guy, black background. And then move this. So you put all of your icons and you into these um, containers, see through containers, right? Yeah, it helps keep things consistent. Like I know these are all 24 by 24, uh, but also because. It helps me swap things out when I want to swap things, just like I kind of showed you guys. Mm -hmm. I also think it helps, yeah, with the spacing there. All right, one last thing we're gonna do. A little line at the very top. All right, I'm not gonna fuss over the color. I'm gonna fuss over. Okay. See, when you're rushing, sometimes you make mistakes. <laughs> but we all do it. You still have two minutes. You're making good time. Oh, really? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. My sense of time has completely gone off. It always changes when you're actually designing, right? You're like, once you're in design mode, it could be hours could go by, but it feels like 40 minutes. There it goes. You see, look at that. Yay. Um, but we need a way to denote that that thing is on. So we're going to do that. Let's go ahead and go to the variation. We're going to add on page state. So what does that mean? So we're going to go back to four. We're going to change this to pressed. All right, there it goes. I'm going to go ahead and go here. On page. Just change this out again. Home and do this to orange or yellow. Mm. Oh, that's that's pressed. Let's remove that. That was a mistake. But there. Yeah. That's what I meant to do. Okay, there you go. So that's our home page. And Perfect. And that looks so spare. good. I know you have 40 seconds. To <laughs> this is like one of those movies where you gotta, you know, diffuse. Like it's like the, the climax of the action. I gotta diffuse the bomb, and I'm sweating. They're gonna cut the wires, like rush hour. There you go. Yeah. You know, have you ever dragged and dropped in images into a repeat grid and then had them? Oh. Do you have a folder of your? Grab one of these. You have the... to Spider Man. This is a great movie. Let's try it. There, this one. Oh yeah, so this is the thing I was mentioning. We could try it. We have just a couple seconds, but you can copy it. Shift, copy, and then select the image and then shift, command, V, and C. Oh, shift, command, V. Okay, let's do that. I think shift, shift or option, command, V on them. Option, command, V. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I must not have heard you right. 
you know what it's fine that i use that all the time so that one's a helpful one a feature of his great shoes all right we are out of time for this we're going to move into the artist spotlight i am going to share my screen so we can give some love to one of the creatives here within our community so let me just share that here we go so the artist that we are going to give some props to is eva harut Yan Yan. And this designer is a UI UX designer, also AR VR designer, graphic designer, illustrator, photo editor, doing it all from Armenia. So I'm really excited to showcase your work, Eva. Let's take a look at my eye goes to party time because I'm always about a party time. <laughs> so I'm like, let's take a look at this and loving the colors already like the selection of the images and it has a, all the images kind of have that fun and funky with the pinks and the purples and the blacks that are used it feels really consistent there yeah these are so cool and oh there goes a map oh this Ooh. is nice yeah i like that you're mapping out all oh. what's happening within the app I watch app for that. I have a nice little sign up in sign up screen. Clean. I'm gonna just kind of scroll down till we get to the meat of the screens here. Ooh, we got the neon colors. How do you feel about neon colors, Alejandro? All for it. I love them. I love uh, like vault green. It's definitely one of my top <laughs> choices. I would have made the app. Bolt green, but I feel like most people aren't a fan of it. So I uh, <laughs> didn't go for it. Yeah, I think that the use of neon is perfect with the party vibes. I think that Not it movies. makes you already feel like you're in a party, just like looking at mm -hmm. these colors and seeing these designs here. You I talked about this yesterday, the the settings piece and how not everyone yeah. shows shows this kind of work. And I'm glad, I'm glad she is. It, it's like I was saying, it's not the prettiest thing in the world to see and not the most fun thing to talk about, but it is very important and forms. Like how do you set those things up? How do you get people engaged? You go ahead and do a form. All things that yeah. have all come up in my previous positions and it's going to come up in any other position I go into and people going into design of work will have to learn how to go about it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I like that. And I also love that you have this kind of smartwatch experience as well as the app experience. So that's really cool. You can show your your range with these different types of interface interfaces that you're designing for. So nice. Nice job. Yeah. What do we want to look at next? A lot of um, things are what pulls your eye now? What pulls my eye? I always found uh Things like, ooh, wait, is that food? <laughs> you can see what's wait, on my where? mind. It's <laughs> right under health me. Oh no, under bookstore. I guess I should have oh, gone one, for this the guy. Book. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah that is food. Ooh, it is lunchtime for me. So <laughs> I can see why you might want to go in here. Um, ooh, this looks really cool. Love the colors. Love the images. They make me really hungry. That's like, like doing its main job oh. there. See, she looks pretty good right now. I love the gradient too she used on the bottom mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's not too like, not too dramatic. It's like a soft gradient from that orange to a, to a little bit of a lighter orange. And I like this app bar. Like it's a little different, but not so different where you don't understand what it is. You're mm -hmm. still quite clear that this is a menu that you can click through. So I, I really like that that decision there. I like how she's setting up the challenges as well. She's she's kind of leading you through this entire thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has all the different challenges labeled, so you kind of understand what what she was working on and the challenge and, and how she executed on it. I like those illustrations too. Yeah, these are really nice use of of illustrations. They all have like there's all very consistent, and it's also like really beautiful 
and interesting illustrations too. Like that's a cool looking hamburger. <laughs> is that is that like a, one of those charcoal yeah. burgers? Have you seen oh. those? I have not. Yeah, I think they're selling them maybe in Japan. It's like Where the bun black, is charcoal? I think it's like has some a little bit of charcoal that like makes it black, or maybe it was just dye. Um, it was really that, neat. I'm not that black it. ice cream, charcoal ice cream, and. And it tastes like regular ice cream, but it's black. So it's like cooler looking or makes your tongue all black. But I will say, you know, like what goes in goes out. <laughs> oh my God. I was even thinking about <laughs> So I love these. This is, she also, again, is kind of going deeper into like the help page, into the track order page, like really showing the depth of this app, which I think really shows kind of like you're really thinking through all the different pieces within this product and also, um, yeah, just being really thoughtful on all the different use cases for this, for this app. So that's, that's a great job as well. Yeah. Um, it was really interesting too. I, w I wonder what, how she'll approach the other side of that, of the customer service platform. You know, yeah. they're gonna, as in the business sense where they go out and, you know, license the software and integrate it in and it be bespoke and build it up from scratch. It's really yeah, cool that's things. a good point. That's something to think about too, if you wanted to like evolve that case study even more. I think this watch design is just super beautiful. I love all the, I love the colors again. You, she has a really good use of, of colors and this makes me feel like really calm and relaxed by looking at it, like ocean vibes. So is this a language? This is um, a recording watch. Oh, okay, app. I can So notes. you can like, yeah, I think for this context is like school, a class, like maybe you're making some notes for yourself for the history lesson. So I love this. Yeah. Great idea. Especially if you're like thinking college students, they all got their smart watches in class. You know, give yourself a little note. I don't think that really awesome. the professor would appreciate someone like um, <laughs> pick up beer for tomorrow's party. <laughs> that would be me. Pick but, up beer after class. That, oh, that would be my class, note. Not during <laughs> class. <laughs> um, but this is really great work. It's good job, Eva. You've got so much work on here, which is also really impressive. So just looking at three of your projects, you can already see that you have a really great style, great UI style, really fleshed out designs as well. So props to you. Thank you so much for either um, putting submitting yourself or maybe someone else gave you the submission and, and submitted your projects, but just Red props for you. We applaud you in the community. Thank you so much for sharing your work for with us and for allowing us to learn from your work. So we we'll give you a nice little follow there. Can't wait. All right. So let's take it back to you. We've still got a little bit more designing. We got oh, screen number it. two that we need to to get into. How much time do we have? Let's see. What share my screen? Uh There we go. All right, we're back. So we got. Okay, I'm so sorry. Let's do this. And there we go. All right. Thanks for bearing with us, guys. We're back. We're going back into design. What else can we do? We have an entire thing. We have an entire other one. Uh, let's... We have a whole other screen that. <laughs> <laughs> do you think I could do this in how much time? Okay, so here's another time challenge for you. Um, you've got about 15 minutes. Oh, do you I? Have, oh, yeah, you got you got time. All right, let's do this. Uh, it's Sonic the Gen Sonic the Hedgehog this up. All right, we got our header. And we got this. Let's bring this and this in. And can I copy them? Let me see. That's... Oh, there it goes. Grab this. Bam. All right, we already got a background. 
We don't need this though. Why don't we actually make a vari variation of it? Yeah, Lee and Voodoo Val love seeing that sketch phase in Eva's portfolio, which I do think is also such a cool thing to showcase the process of your work, not just the final designs. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to see that evolution of the process. And um, yeah, if you guys want to get your work spotlighted, please put it in the artist spotlight tab there. There's the chat, the info and the spotlight artist spotlight tab. Check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, how do you feel about the, the process, Alejandro, sharing the full process in your portfolios and in your case study? What do you think about it? I love it. Uh, it kind of shows all of like the ups and down to design. Uh, I also enjoy seeing people still sketch. I think it's a great way to can, like do the work and try to iterate. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm always a big fan of it. I like to see what they were thinking. I like to see why they were doing this and going from A to Z. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool to understand like the reasons why people, why designers make certain design decisions and, um, how they came up with a logo or a screen style. And it's, I, I love seeing that process. I just saw my sister too show me her full process of how she created her first little um, like graphic novel poster that she just did. She hasn't done the full graphic novel, but just the poster. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love seeing that full process. And that's the beauty of being able to watch other designers and learn from them. And, um, you know, if you guys are interested in watching other designers and watching their process, there are also people on Behance that are designing live kind of all the time. So you guys can really learn from other designers, not just through Adobe Live, but on the Behance Live as well. Um, so I recommend checking it out. Yeah, and there's also the creative challenges too. And I saw that she actually challenges. did do creative challenge. Who? Uh, um, uh, our featured artist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She did tons. That was really awesome, yeah. She also like really looked like she fleshed out some of those creative challenges as well. So you can take a creative challenge and then you can kind of continue on with that, that piece of work and flesh it out even more after the design challenge. Cause you only have like a day to work on something. So some people feel like, okay, I want to come back to this design and improve upon it. And so, yeah, feel free to kind of flesh it out make a full case study from it. Absolutely. So now what I'm doing is making, so I made a variation of this toolbar at the very top. So now we have ourselves a back button and we're going to go ahead and make this a check mark. There are a check mark. There we go. Am I too far? No, nope, we're good. Um, one thing that's going to happen is I want this to stick as they scroll. So they always have access and be able to go back and um, state that they've watched it. But for that to happen, I would need, I would want so as they would scroll, this would kind of have a background to it. So we can actually make two different versions of this as well. One without that background. So kind of like, like this. Oh, I am <laughs> doing that. There it goes. Let's just turn this back. But now you know, um, at next time, like what I would do normally is create two different versions, one without the kind of overlay and one with. So let's go and let's permit this 65%. That's too much, yeah. So some screens you might want to have like that white bar and then some screens you just want it to kind of be. Uh, yeah. So right now I'm just kind of playing with it. More than likely I'll come back and just go with the safe route. But mm -hmm. since we only have 15 minutes, I'm going to go and live dangerously. Yeah, there. I like it. We're going to top gun it up. Just, okay. So now we need a, oh, let's change these, sorry. 
I can't read anything. The contrast is terrible. That's what I'm talking about. There you go, I can read now. So let's grab one of our assets. See, I was already kind of thinking about using that. Oh, that's a good image. Yeah. It's got a chainsaw. Scary stuff. Okay, so this is gonna be kind of like a media asset. So what would probably happen is we would license out a database, probably IMDB, and then kind of use that to populate our information. Because like I was saying earlier, it if you were to work with an engineer and try to build your own database for this, for movies, it's gonna be a lot of work. Um, a lot of times it's just easier to just contract these, uh, work with another company that kind of already does this stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, when I make components, I like to think about how they're gonna be built and how the engineer is gonna build them. I think maybe I mentioned this a little bit before, but like I was saying is, this and this would be one component. So this would be one component. This is a component in itself and then combined would be a larger component. So that's kind of the thought process is, and then these would be portions of like larger card. So we're slowly building up and up and up. And a good way to like learn this stuff too is go into a website, open up inspector tool and just kind of look around and see how they use their divs. Oh, never thought to do that. That's a good. Good pointer. As a production designer, I kind of do that all the time because I got to see, oh, what's the spacing on this because I can't find the file. Oh, yeah. nice. So. Yeah, if you guys go into Inspector into your browser, from your browser, I've never used it anything outside of Chrome. Have you? Uh, I use Firefox that, primarily, the same? Okay. Uh, but they work the same. I can't say there's any difference in the two. There you go. So we got a rating. I think this came out in 2020. I just watched it yesterday and I'm already forgetting everything about it. One hour and... 20. Four. Ooh, okay. Yeah, let's do, okay, let's <laughs> it's do a short one. <laughs> there it goes. So now it means people can know and see what the runtime is. Yeah, we're not going to get too in the weeds on this. But we know this is a horror slasher. I call it even using slashes comedy. There it goes. Sorry, right, it's it's getting there. Mm hmm. Yeah, you already got the most of the top half done. That's kind of so you kind of notice like the weight is a little bit off here. So icons are much bigger than this one. So it kind of has a visual imbalance. Uh, that's something to look out for when you're when you're building things. So even though they might be the correct uh, size, pixel wise, visually the hierarchy still might be weighted differently. So you would have to adjust for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we get into buttons. So what's this gonna be? Let's go with- Ooh, What is your buttons gonna look like? Oh, that is a good question. I don't know <laughs> that. So watch on HBO Max. I promise I don't work for HBO Max. I'm not trying to sponsor them, uh, but it's on there. So watch on HBO Max. Let's make these. We have already kind of started a trend of having kind of rounded corners. So let's do that. That's a good, that's a good question. What's, what's our buttons going to look like? Mm. I don't want to do black because it's already kind of a dark background. You could leave it at white. It's a little boring. Oh, it's not even the right. There you go, Sophia Pro. What do you guys think? Let's go with... Any suggestions in the chat for the button colors? Yeah. We have like yellow, white, that dark gray you're using. Um, I don't know about that. We can go. We can oh, go bring in, uh, in a new color, neon green. kind of color. We got this baby blue. Let's go. Let's go with the yellow. Let's go with this. We kind of already have our logos kind of yellow. So let's just do that. This is a forty-eight. Cool. So let's bring this up. 
I want to oh. At 12. I think that's good. All right. So what's going to be our second button? Here? Second button is going to be where to watch. What am I doing? Compositize it. Any changes? Any changes I can now make on that master component? I could just make it to all of them. All right. So let's do that. I don't like that border. Let's make this. Yeah, so you're showing that example right now because you're changing the main component, the border on it. I am changing the border on it. Let's make that a little bit lighter. And so now. Kind of works. Oh, not going to fuss about it right now. We'll make oh, those yeah. polishes at the end. Mm -hmm. All right. So what else do they need to know? All right, so we got. The nav bar, we have navigations that could get in and out if they want to. They can go ahead and say they watched it. There's media. Uh, we would add additional features. Right now, I'm not doing that because I would probably try to iterate what's a good way of going ahead and like showing off all that different media. So we're going straight into title, what the rating is. We even add the rating. So we have about so, three minutes left. <laughs> okay. Wondering what, ooh, okay. Let's see. Think we could do it? All right, this yeah. is rough. mad dash. Let's do three it. Three minutes, three minutes. All Make right. it happen. Have you ever tried to give yourself like a hardcore design challenge with a short period of time? Like, I feel like those movies where you're like British Bake Off or something. Uh, it feels like that. That design jam <laughs> was like that. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Had, like, so you've two been two hours, I think, to work on something Whoa. much like this. So see, having, we'll put it at four. So we'll just do four. Featured on, we won't do anything too crazy. And let's go ahead and add this in here. Now you're able to like use already a lot of the components you just made in that first screen. Yeah, exactly. And this is why I love components. They're so helpful. You can keep consistency across multiple pages. You don't have to worry about rebuilding things. Maybe there's some slight changes and you just add them as variations. It's just really nice. All right, so 32. One thing I'm not a fan of is that here you can see the viewport on this. There's nothing uh, kind of showing there's additional information or additional content below this kind of viewport. Um, I would normally come back and try to fix this, but yeah. right now we're not. So let's just, let's just Oh, yeah, that's a good have point have to make. The plot. Because if you like, yeah, if you can't tell that you need to scroll down or you can scroll down for more information, we usually want like a little teaser there, but that's something to, to flesh out later. So uh, that's a job for future Alex, not not uh, present day Alex. Yes, We're not this is time crunch Alex. You got one minute. There it comes. I still may feel, I, I now understand all those British break costs. <laughs> the feeling, the time, I, I one feel minute I'm, time. <laughs> okay, component this. We're gonna go ahead and do that. We're making this a black background. Leah's, Lee says that your site is looking so nice and clean. He's loving it. It is looking really nice and all put together now in the last couple minutes. Thank you. This is why a design system helps and not, not just components, everything. Um, makes things so much easier and able to access those things. So we knew that we had to have three. So let's do it. Padding at zero. Yeah. If you guys haven't yet, please follow Alejandro. Voodoo Val has put his website into the chat. Continue following his work and Kind of like, yeah, we're at the last few seconds here. We're seeing it all okay. come together. You've done such a fantastic job of like showcasing the, the challenge of 
want people wanting to share movie lists and creating an app that allows you to share your love for movies, all the interesting movie lists that you come up with, like romantic movies to watch with my boo, which I personally love. And you have that ability to like watch it on all these different, um, all, all these different options, HBO Max, Hulu, whatever it is and be able to kind of look at more information about it, reviews and whatnot. So you've, you've done a lot. You have a lot of good features here that you've showcased. Um, and I'm, yeah, I think you've done great work these last few days. Thank you. I'm glad to have uh, everyone join us. Um, this is what I got in the last six minutes. I can replace that now now that I have that already built out. So, but thank you. It's been uh, a joy being on here, sharing movies, getting to chat with you guys and just working on working on something new. Yeah, amazing. And don't forget to stay tuned for the XD Daily Creative Challenge stream with Jesse Showalter that is coming right up. Stay tuned for that. And we hope to see you guys in a future live stream soon. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Take care. Great work, Alejandro.